This week on Cowgirls. It's kind of like a rocking chair, only different. You might get hurt. <laughs> I don't care if I break all the bones in my body, I'm gonna keep doing this. But when she hit, she landed on her shoulder, so they took her back to the ambulance, checked her out. She's not wanting medical. You know, these girls are crazy. I think I'm gonna keep riding until I die. I don't know. You know, I might not be the first girl that's ever done it, but I wanna be the girl that's done it that they're gonna remember. Since the days of the Old West, cowboys have been working their ranches on horseback. Mastering broncos and bulls was par for the course. So it's not surprising that rodeos popped up across rural America in the late 1800s. And naturally, ranch bronc riding evolved from the everyday life of those ranchers into the sport it's known as today. Rodeos weren't exclusively a man's sport, but women didn't get much respect as rodeo cowboys until sweet little Lucille Mulhall walked onto the scene in 1899. Considered America's first cowgirl, Lucille kept up with the boys and starred in the Congress of Rough Riders and Ropers, making her mark across the country. Rodeo cowgirls performed alongside the men in bronc riding, but in 1929, in front of adoring fans and press, champion bronc rider Bonnie McCarroll was fatally injured by a bronc at the Pendleton Roundup in Oregon. The widespread coverage of this tragic event is credited as putting a veritable end to ladies' bronc riding in most rodeos across the nation. Today, thousands of men compete in the sport while only a handful of women participate. In fact, some states still won't even allow women bronc riders. Sure, there's barrel racing and goat tying, but women's bronc events are seemingly a thing of the past. Yet a determined few have decided it's high time we stop mourning the loss of Bonnie McCarroll. Women are getting back in the ranch saddle in the arena again. Daryl McElroy and his wife Michelle both champion their return. Daryl is a lifelong professional rodeo cowboy with a love of bucking horses, whose career was cut short in 2015 when he broke his back coming off a bronc, narrowly escaping a crippling spinal cord injury. After his recovery, he decided to turn his passion for the sport into a nonprofit for training. That same year, Daryl and Michelle launched the Texas Bronc Riders Association to help young bronc riders excel in their craft, and more importantly, to earn scholarships for college. They have a special focus to rekindle the interest in female ranch bronc riders. You have tough, and then you have cowgirl tough, and these girls are like cowgirl tough. It's amazing. Um, back in my day, half the stuff these girls would have they pull off nowadays, I just shake my head because I'd be laid up in a bed for a week probably and then they get up smiling and wanting to do it again. It, it just, it's crazy to me. It's completely crazy. And I love it. Some would say these ladies are bringing back the long lost art of female ranch bronc riding. But between them, they're becoming family. We just feel blessed that it's come together so well. Um, we have these core group of girls and we are, we're very close. As soon as the first rodeo, I mean, the phones were just going crazy. You know, phone numbers exchanged, text messaging. I mean, all night long, the phones were just going nuts. We have our own personal page that uh, we communicate with the girls. Almost on a daily basis, we're talking to them. And everyone gets along really, really well. And it's just been a blessing. So yeah, we couldn't have asked for a better group of girls. Yeah, rodeo is rodeo family, and wherever you go, there's always a community that's pretty welcoming, and they're very helpful and supportive. Modern saddle bronc riders use a standardized association bronc saddle with the horn removed, and the saddle designed to sit higher up on the horse's back. The women of the Texas Bronc Riding Association, TBRA, keep with traditional ranch saddle riding to showcase their talent. It's supposed to simulate 
the work you do on a working ranch. I mean, you go out and you're doing a job and your horse is blown up and you're just trotted out 12 miles and, you know, if you get bucked off and he, he spooks and runs off and leaves you there, you're gonna walk home 12 miles. And so you do everything you can to stay on that horse. Saddle Bronc has a specific saddle where the swells are built up. You can really get underneath and you can spur a regular ranch bronc, you're just bringing a regular saddle. It's not really set up for you to be able to have that movement in your feet. Not a lot of people realize that or understand it. They, you know, it's always saddle bronc or bareback, um, but ranch bronc riding has roots. For me, it's a little more traditional. This dates back to the 1800s where cowboys and cowgirls rode with the same working saddle they used in day-to-day -day ranching. In this competition, the rider can hold on with both hands one hand on the reins and the other on either the saddle horn or gripping an additional rope tied to the saddle called a night latch. The women come from all walks of life. There are high school students and there are roller derby champions. Yet they all have the same goal, to last eight seconds on a powerful bucking horse. There's a lot of commitment in this. Uh, between time, energy, money, the potential of getting hurt and as they travel and they get hurt, and then they still have to keep up a day job. Day job's pretty difficult to keep up. Welcome to the resurgence of women's bronc riding. Quit's not in my dictionary, unfortunately. It's probably not very smart, but. I've always really loved the sport of rodeo. I never really got into it until I was 10, and I really had somebody give me the push to get into it and find a trainer. And I've always really loved, you know, how rough and tumble the rough stock is. I, I like it. These ladies are all tough competitors with their kindred spirits and fast becoming friends. Graham, Texas, the rodeo is underway. There is a tangible excitement in the air. Something about two athletes working together in a synergistic chaos of uncertainty. For some of these ladies, this will be their second ride. But for all, the goal is to stay on for eight seconds. A lot of it is going through my mental checklist, um, getting my halter on right, and making sure it's not too tight, too loose on that horse. Everything is preparing myself up to win. Everything I do on that horse, the moment I put that halter on, put my saddle on, paying attention to how he is behaving in the shoot. I don't know what's gonna happen out there. Like, I don't know if I'm, I'm not gonna think about it, I'm just gonna do it. So when you're in the shoot, you're thinking everything you can do, knowing that as soon as that gate open, my mind's gonna go black anyway, so there's really no point in being nervous. But right before they open the gate, it kind of gets eerily calm, so then it's fine. Once you let that calm set in, you go, because if you don't, then you're not gonna go. When that chute first opens, I naturally kind of sit back, because that horse rears up to go back down, and so it's a lot of force pulling you back, and you just have to find that balance before you get thrown forward. So <laughs> you really have to sit back and just lock yourself in and feel that ride. Up next, the first timer finishes in the money at the Graham Rodeo. Competing in ranch bronc riding is a commitment of both skill and time. Thanks to outdated restrictions, these female athletes often have to travel far and wide to find a rodeo that allows women to compete in the sport. Texas happens to be one of the few places that holds ladies ranch bronc riding events and some riders cross more than a few state lines to compete. 24-year-old Brittany travels all the way from Idaho. I had a guy on the airplane on the way down here. He asked me how long I was gonna keep riding Bronx, and I said, the only thing I could think of is until I'm so broken I can't get on anymore, but even then I'll probably still try it, so I don't know. Brittany, who started Bronx riding in college, is considered one of the veterans of the group. Uh, I had one person tell me, are you gonna quit after a thousand head? And I was like, well, I'm already over 200, so I don't think that's gonna work either. I don't picture myself quitting. I think I'm gonna keep riding until something happens where I can't, whether it's if I get paralyzed or, you know, at the very worst, die, I don't know. Duke. Another experienced rider from North Texas is just getting back into the sport after an unexpected side tour. I stopped rodeoing immediately when I found out I was pregnant. I actually just had some brand new rodeo equipment come in and I was ready to start the season and surprise pregnancy test positive. So I 
put everything aside, it was not worth the risk. Tell you what, I, I sure don't want to stand before God one day and have to answer to him when he says, why did you, you know, why did you be so careless with this blessing that I gave you? So I thought, nah, I'll hang it up. And I've hung it up for, for about two years now and I'm trying to dust all my stuff back up and spray some WD-40 in my joints and get rolling again. But since I had little Joe, my baby boy, that turns one next month, things have changed a little bit. Cause you know, you're still thinking the ride's the utmost important, but then you have this little thing gnawing at you from the side saying you cannot get hurt. Be smart, pay attention to your gut, hold on, don't get in a bind, don't do anything that's gonna get you killed or out of that boy's life. I mean, it. That's been quite a change. Sixteen-year-old Rainey hails from Kentucky. She's no stranger to horses, but this will be her second time to sit in the chute. I've always really loved the sport of rodeo. I never really got into it until I was 10, and I really had somebody give me the push to get into it and find a trainer. And I've always really loved, you know, how rough and tumble the rough stock is. I, I like it and I like getting in with the boys and I like getting my hands dirty and nobody around me will let the girls get in with the boys and get their hands dirty. So uh, if I have to come to Texas to do it, then I'll come to Texas to do it. You know, I might not be the first girl that's ever done it, but <laughs> I wanna be the girl that's done it that they're gonna remember. Billy has ridden bulls, barebacks, and even played polo. But lately, she's focused on another sport. I've been playing roller derby for the last five years, so it'd be kind of fun to get back in the western type arena again. I figured this should be easier than bulls. I do have a lot of hardware in my arms, so that's why roller derby is good. You don't use your forearms. I'm kind of concerned about what it's going to take to hold on. Um, bringing out a wash rig can be hard for me sometimes with all of the screws and plates, so we'll just have to find out. Tori, a college student from Oklahoma, was inspired by love. My fiance, two years ago, was in the Riley Miller Memorial Ranch Bronc riding, and then he kind of talked me into it. And that year, there were, when I called in, there were already too many people, so I couldn't get in. And then so the next year, I called in, got in, and the ride went really well. It wasn't like too hard of a bucking horse, and I didn't get hurt, so that was probably the worst thing for me. So it kind of got me hooked, thinking nothing will go wrong, but I know something will go wrong eventually. But uh, that kind of started it all. 18-year-old Sarah from Weatherford, Texas, has worked with horses much of her life. Well, I've been team roping and starting colts for quite a few years, and uh, I've just rode some crazy colts, and I find it pretty enjoyable. And I know a few people that do ranch rodeos and ranch bronc, and I decided I'd try and jump on one and see how I do. <laughs> for Jane, a 19-year-old student from Virginia, attending college opened her to new opportunities. Well, I've always wanted to do it back home in Virginia, but we didn't have a lot of places that offered it with women and stuff. So once I moved down to Texas for college, there's more opportunities. I've always barrel raced and goat tied and did pole bending and all that sorts of stuff. So I never bronc ride until the other day. <laughs> so far, I like it a lot. 22-year-old Maddie also learned about bronc riding at college. I mean, it's always been interesting. My roommate actually is a ranch bronc rider. And we were joking one day, he said, you should try this. And I was like, yeah, I'm in. And then he contacted a guy who runs the Iron Cowboy riding and said she wants to do it. I thought it was a joke. And then he called me and was like, hey, we need more girl riders. And he said he'd pay for all the fees. So I was like, I'm in. And then from that, Daryl uh, contacted me and asked if I wanted to do this whole series. And once again, I was in. <laughs> Some parents raise their girls to be in beauty pageants or on the dance team. For these young women, their reward is grit and courage. So what do their families think of this? This is something Rainey's wanted to do since she was eight. And, you know, she just turned 17, and she's wanted to do this as long as I can remember. This is just what she breathes. I mean, I never had one second of me, not one shred of me, ever thought, no, we're not going to do this. No, never. She's, she has worked hard. I mean, this is what she's going to do, so I'm going to do everything I can to support her. As far as my parents go, when I started riding, they did not like it. They were not fans. I kind of actually waited a while till I was out from under their roof and, you know, 18, and 
could sign my own releases because they, they just sure wasn't having it. They wish I wouldn't ride the Bronx and the Bulls, and I understand why, but I, I can't give it up. It's my passion. My husband supports me 100%. She's tough and hard-headed enough to hold on to a bucking horse after you're bucked off. And my favorite event is the saddle bronc riding. So now uh, I got a wife that's riding saddle bronc horses. And uh, so it's a lot of fun. But I like women in rough stock and always have. And, uh, and I'm glad to see it coming back and, and people getting to enjoy it again. Why even live? If, if you can't do what you love doing. I told my mom about it. She was a little concerned. She uh, told me to wear a helmet and bubble wrap. The very first horse I rode in the small town in Idaho, I didn't tell my mom I was getting on. And so when I rode and then when I won, I called her and I said, hey, um, I know you're gonna be upset and I'm sorry, I'm stubborn, but I got on a bronc and I really like it. God dang it, Brittany, you know, you're gonna get hurt and I can't afford this and yada yada. And I was like, well, mom, I won. You're so freaking awesome. <laughs> and so she's she's gonna be supportive of me no matter what. And she, she thinks this is really cool that I've taken this as far as I have. Up next on Cowgirls, the riders prepare for their next rodeo and wrangle Daryl into a high stakes bet. If four of us cover, we get to like shave your eyebrow. As the girls travel in from all over the country to Central Texas for their next rodeo, the results come in from Graham. Duke and Rainey took the lead, tying with scores of 72 on Bronx Tomato Juice and Round Jacket. And while the rest didn't score, they held on for dear life. Rookie Maddie stayed on Bronx Black Betty for 6.84 seconds. Veteran Brittany held on to Oklahoma Clone for 6.20 seconds. Tori danced with Oklahoma Flower for 4.28 seconds. Billy and Sarah rode their Bronx, Oklahoma Crazy, and Lil Ray of Sunshine for well over three seconds. While newcomer Jane used her grit to hang on to feisty spot fire for almost two seconds. Injury is a stark reality of a sport that involves a massive animal bucking a small human being violently. Duke certainly knows. Oh, I broke my back when I was 16, busted it up pretty bad. Obviously, I'm not paralyzed or anything. And then I got on a ranch bronc, I guess it was probably 2011, and went over the front, and he run over the top of me, broke some ribs, messed my lung up, broke my back a second time, and my thumb and I've been hurt on bulls as well, knee injuries, that happens quite frequently. Bucking horses, I, you know, honestly, I can't keep up with everything. I've broke fingers and stuff like that. You wouldn't think you'd break a, a dadgum finger on a bucking horse, but man, you go to grab the horn or go to get a halt somewhere and you can sure as heck jam something up. Their families aren't wrong to be concerned. There is much risk involved in the sport, so why do they do it? It's amazing. It's kind of like floating on air. If you get it just right and you get in time right, it's like, I don't even know how to explain it. It's so fun. Yeah, I know exactly that feeling. <laughs> the crowd, the crowd's really into it. And so your blood's going and you're there every jump and you're, you're, you can feel that horse, everything he does. And you're right in tune. There's no air between your butt and the saddle. You're, I mean, you're sucked down right in there and you're lifting and everything is, is is great you're just in tune with that horse and um and you know you put on a good ride that is the most incredible feeling ever um i mean that's that's pretty much what i come here for it's so much fun it makes you just you know, like load another one up and let's go i don't know it's it's kind of like a rocking chair only different you might get hurt <laughs> San Antonio, home of the Alamo and the Riverwalk. The girls gather before tomorrow's big rodeo in Poutique. Billy will miss the rodeo due to a roller derby conflict, while Tori will meet the team later tonight after a college event. For the rest of the ladies, it's time to celebrate the victories in Graham, learn from mistakes, and get mentally ready for the next event. Everybody say, stay out the dirt. <laughs>
<laughs> Don't hit your head. <laughs> Don't get a concussion. <laughs> Don't break your tailbone. I didn't break it. I bruised uh, mine. Break. Tomorrow, there is ranked horses. We already saw, we're talking 18, 19 point horses. So, we're gonna have to work on them. So I need y'all to kind of help me out, guide a few of them. We need to work on their reins, because if we went back and looked at the video, everybody's reins was too short, so you only need to make sure they get their rein back into place, make sure they get their saddle set up straight. We might have to go in and get the baby powder out, show them how to powder down their latigo so we can pull their saddles tight. And you, don't fall off. <laughs> no. That's all I'm asking, just don't fall yeah. off. I hope I don't fall off and quit like I did last time. I felt like I quit. I, I know I didn't. I know what happened, but I can't stop thinking that I just gave up. It's hard dirt there. Mm, sharp yeah. rocks. Very hard dirt. I know. I've hit it a couple know, of times I'm, there. I'm, I'm way better than what I showed last week. My biggest fear in the world is failure, and you're just focused on you cannot come off. Do not come off. Don't come off. There's cactus, there's rattlesnakes, there's thorns, you can't fall off. We're gonna have rank pin of horses tomorrow, okay? Ground was kind of your warm up. Now you're gonna roll into the big boy horses. Learn from other people's mistakes and use that to your advantage. I mean, you got everything available to you to set yourself up to win, so. And remember, I wanna set y'all up for success. I'm not here to. Make a mortar of us? No, I wanna see, <laughs> I wanna see every one of y'all ride y'all's horses. So I know we were talking about making a bet. <clears throat> Can we go like, if four of us cover, we get to like shave your eyebrows? No. <laughs> I have a real job too, you know that, right? Who gives so, a crap about that? We don't have to be normal. We aren't normal. I have a bunch of girls riding bucking horses. There's nothing <laughs> normal about us. <laughs> Okay, have you ever seen a guy with shaved eyebrows and gone, hey? Yes, no I have seen guys with shaved eyebrows. And, and, I bet they and were everyone cool. thinks it's funny. It's just yeah. funny. You're like, hey, you're the funny guy. I don't want to yeah, be the funny the shaved guy. Shaved eyebrows. I mean, I, I have enough issues as it is. I don't want to be funny. Can we mohawk Die. your hair? All right, I tell you what. I if all of y'all, all right, funny. this is the bet. This oh. is the bet. If all of y'all ride tomorrow, all of y'all cover your horses. All right. Daryl decides dinner is a good distraction from the bed. It's also the perfect time to discuss tomorrow's rodeo. Okay, so uh, bad news. Tori just got to Fort Worth. Oh my gosh. She got caught in NASCAR traffic. So we'll see her about midnight. NASCAR. So yeah, she'll be here about midnight. So she's gonna be able to join us for dinner tonight. But we'll toast a nice tea to her. Well, that's At least she's coming. And let's have fun tonight. In the morning, we need to all get up about in the morning, right? We need to leave the hotel about 9.30. There's gonna be a lot of traffic because this is a really popular event. So there's gonna be a ton of people there. So we need to get there before the crowd gets there. I wanna go up, I wanna get y'all's draw, and then we're gonna come back down and I'm gonna go over everybody's horses with you so you know exactly what kind of rain to take, what your horse is gonna potentially do, and then you guys can start working on your game plan. I'd like everybody to get your saddles out and let's go through everybody's saddles. Make sure your saddles are set up correctly. I know we had little issues last time around. Let's make sure they're smooth, you guys are set. So if you need help figuring out what we need to do with your saddle, adjusting your saddle, or your horse, or your rein and stuff, talk to me, please. Or talk to Duke, or you can talk to Brittany for you other girls, because they'll be able to help you out. But we'll get everything squared away. We'll rock it out. We'll make the house go crazy, I guarantee. And we have our bet. Yeah. Yes. What is the bet? <laughs> you don't know about the bet? No. Up next on Cowgirls, what bet did Daryl and the ladies finally agree upon? Tomorrow, the Cowgirls will ride at the Strawberry Festival and Rodeo in Poteet, Texas. Tonight, they're in nearby San Antonio, enjoying classic Tex-Mex at Rita's on the river while Daryl lays out the terms of a friendly bet. What is the bet? So the bet is, that everybody has to have a qualified ride tomorrow. If everybody has a qualified ride tomorrow, comes on qualified, qualified ride, then in Wichita Falls, 
I will have a pink mohawk. And he's gonna dance. No, the dancing you added after the fact. No, I, I've been I've been voting for that the whole time. You just didn't include it in there. Exactly. Exactly. So, but first we gotta do our part, guys. We gotta ride. All right, yeah. but y'all have to ride your Bronx. Okay. Okay. All right, everybody can ride your Bronx. Throw a hand in there. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> Don't eat the dirt. dirt. Okay, there you go. <laughs> For one of the cowgirls, this isn't just a night on the town before tomorrow's ride. It's special for another reason. It's called a sopapilla. Never had Have you never had a sopapilla? No. Okay, so. It's amazing. Yep, you get a little bit of ice cream on there. That is a Texas birthday cake. Yep. I like it. I like it. The, the Hispanic version. You guys have been deprived. Texas on a good day has a population of just over 3,000 but when the strawberry festival and rodeo come to town it blossoms to over a hundred thousand attendees here at the Poteet strawberry festival this is a monstrous event that I believe is in its 60th year uh, it's right here south of San Antonio it's a huge community event Matthew Myers has been a rodeo announcer for 22 years I love being a rodeo announcer. I started doing this when I was in college. There's a big broad range of experience that you get to cater to, and this is the fun part about this. Uh, the less people know about rodeo, the more fun they are to work with. Myers knows a thing or two about what's ahead for the girls today, and he has a few words of wisdom for them. It is understood that women in rodeo are generally not involved as much in the rough stock events, and we're seeing a resurgence of the ladies being involved. And I think that's really exciting. And a great bronc ride looks really easy. You see it as a spectator and go, I could do that. When you don't do it right, it is very, very painful and it looks very, very hard. But then when you see it go wrong and a cowgirl get out of time with the horse's rhythm, it can get really ugly, really painful. And, and as we all know, rodeo people like to watch the spectacular buck off too. It's the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. For the cowgirls, Poteet represents a bigger audience and more exposure and practice for their rodeo career. It's a, definitely a different vibe than Grandma's. Grandma's more laid back, you know, this is people everywhere, you know, everybody's getting ready. At Graham, you know, we just walked in, they ran the horses in, and we got on and we left. Graham, two weeks ago, is my first time doing it, and so it was pretty different, but I'm so looking forward to today and getting on another one. I was sore for a while afterwards, and. My friend was like, are you sure you want to do this? It's like, I'm in. I don't care if I break all the bones in my body, I'm going to keep doing this. You really got to get your head in the game. You know, we're all playing around out here, but it's fixing to start getting serious. I'm really excited to get on. Uh, I've kind of got a feel for my last ride and what I should do to correct myself this time better. Get a longer rain is one, one thing. Um, I'm ready to cover today. To help them cover, Daryl brings the cowgirls in for some last minute motivation. I'm going to tell you right now, don't believe a damn thing that you hear from anybody if it doesn't come from me or come from Wesley McManus. Just straight up, all right? Because there's times they don't want you here. They think y'all need to be racing barrels or open cows, all right? Now, like I said last time, if something happens in the arena, y'all take a hard spill, uh, you just have an issue or whatever, let's not do anything in the arena. 
I'll be the first person. I'll probably be right next to you before you hit the ground if something happens. We have the bet. Pink Mohawk, right? One night. But everybody got it. Everybody has to hear the whistle today, all right? Everybody good with that? Yep. Put it in. Hear the oh, whistle on the horse. Not hear come on, the come on. The dirt. What, what was it saying? I don't like that. Don't eat dirt. Don't eat dirt on three. <laughs> Jump in here. Right for 90. One, two, three. Don't, Don't eat dirt. dirt. All right, ride there you go. <laughs> ride for 90. Ride for 90? Oh, God. Yeah, let's go eat some strawberries. Maddie gets ready on Bronk Painted Nightmare, but it's a rough start. Shut the gate. Let's do it again. Maddie Wilson, College Station, Texas. Come on, cowgirl. Yeah. Watch, watch. Come on, Poteen, help her a little bit. Hard way for a cowgirl to make a living. For Maddie Wilson, her tumble may be more serious than just a bruised ego. Jane Rivercup. Jane gets some help on hopscotch. Come on, cowgirl. Yeah, this is one we're looking for. East Coast said, let me show you. How about that East Coast frog buster? There. Pumped up. Scores coming in. 74.74 to take the lead. Sarah strides white lightning. Sarah, you got 74 points on your mind, but you can go 85. We're not going to stop yet. Come on. Come on. We're there. She's going to make it. Oh, the plot thickens. 74 points to tie. It's a signal. Let's go. Time to play. Tori focuses in on straight line. Come on, Tori girl. Well, it's not going to work for Miss Merrill today. Come on, Pote. Help her a little. Cowgirl goes down. It's two up, two down. Duke positions herself on Bronx JK. Duke Wimberly from Poole, Texas. Watch. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hold on tight, cowgirl. You want to talk about grip, drive? Come on, Pote. 69, 69 points for Nick Wimberly. Rainey prepares for dive bomber. She got a bucker. Head first. Into that strawberry festival dirt. A gritty and tough cowgirl. She is frustrated as she walks out. Put your hands together, protein, for that cowgirl. She is not satisfied. Brittany is confident on whiteout. Let's make some money, make some magic. Yep. and she got to the whistle. She is cowgirl to the court. We've got ourselves the final ride. Takes the lead in the win. 80 points from Brittany Miller. We had one high dollar horse in there, which was the horse Brittany Miller drew. Uh, she put a heck of a show on, which everybody saw. Um, I think this would be great for the next rodeo because these girls know what they got. I think all the girls were evenly matched. And I think moving forward, they're all going to be evenly matched again, but they're going to have that one horse in that pen that they either want to draw or they don't want to draw. So it's kind of that suspense, you know, do I get that 90 horse or do I not get that 90 horse? After all the girls finish their rides, Daryl hears that Maddie is in the ambulance. Maddie Wilson, she drew a pretty nice horse. Uh, she kind of got out of her saddle a little bit, got bucked off when she hit. 
I haven't real, not sure if she landed, the way she landed on her shoulder, she got stepped on also in the process, but uh, she was complaining a little bit, so they took her back to the ambulance, checked her out. When we come back, Maddie is down, but is she out? For Maddie, one of the newest members of the team, it was a rough ride at the Strawberry Festival and Rodeo in Poteet. And after a bad fall, her boyfriend brought her to the on-site paramedics. I remember him like going out, running a little bit, stopping, and then started bucking. And I felt myself go over the front the first time. Then I tried to throw myself back. And then I think, I don't even know if this is right. I don't really remember if this is right so far. <laughs> yeah, I was pretty worried about her when she was in the ambulance. Well, she came off, and I didn't think much was wrong with her. And then we went down and sat over here, and she didn't look too good. And I asked if she needs to see the medics. She couldn't really talk, so. so. They took her back to the ambulance, checked her out. Uh, she's not wanting medical done onto her, which is understandable, because she's cowgirl tough. You know, these girls are crazy. He doesn't think I broke anything, but he still said I need to go to the ER. I don't know why then. But anyways, I told him I wasn't going to do that. <laughs> After arrest, Maddie has the strength to join the rest of the ladies for the payouts. So we had a great event today, and I've got the payouts for the gals who covered their horses. They paid three holes. So I want to congratulate Jane. It's $205. And I have for Sarah $205. And then coming in first, the big win, $615. <laughs> I won't be a sloppy next time. Oh, <laughs> sloppy. Sloppy. <laughs> the downside is I don't have to have a mohawk now. <laughs> God, we're uh, all so close though. Uh, we're so close. Close. So close. Next time, next time. So close. I, I was not even out of the arena before I was being caught by every guy walking through there. You guys impressed them all. So you got some guys back there thanking now. Remember I was telling you all earlier, there's people who don't want you here, right? There's guys back there going, eh, they're gonna, it's gonna be entertaining to watch these girls fall off, get two jumped. Now you just proved them wrong. You jumped out there and they're like, holy crap, these girls can ride horses. All the girls just did amazing. Uh, everybody's about average where they should have been. So congratulations, great job. And I tell you what, let's get ready because next rodeo, big money. Gonna be a lot of girls out there. They're gonna be gunning for y'all now. They see what the competition is. You guys have set the bar. Get your practice in. It's gonna be wild in Wichita, all right? So bring it in. The number of horses they've been on in their career, I can see that these girls are gonna be all phenomenal the time finals rolls around. I expect them to all be up in the 80s by the time we get to the finals rodeo this year. With the Poteet Rodeo behind them, the girls enjoy a final evening out. I'm so proud of them. Every girl, I mean, just put everything into it. I mean, heart and soul. It's just, it's been a great weekend. I'm really pleased. Daryl gives them all some parting advice to prepare for the Wichita County Mounted Patrol Championship Rodeo coming up in three weeks. All right, girls, so I just want to say, y'all did an amazing, amazing job this weekend. You came in, you showed the boys up. Definitely showed the boys up. Um, but, Goodness gracious, Maddie. Maddie, Maddie, Maddie. Honey, you're killing me. I've decided we're gonna give you the Crash and Burn Award for Poteet, Texas. So, here's you, a new buck ring. Now, go ahead and give it your acceptance speech, but do me a favor, don't win any more of those. No. Well, you're not, I'm not gonna nosedive off any more horses. <laughs> Once you do it a couple times, you get kind of over it. Oh, I'm over it. I'm <laughs> over it. Yeah. Anytime the horses get out there in vapor lock, it just throws your whole game plan off because you're expecting to have this big blow up, and then you're like, "Come, who, who, who hit this pause button? Come on now, <laughs> right?" And then you yeah. have to reset, and then you just kind of reset your whole game plan, and it throws everything off. All right, now let's talk about you. You got your butt bucked off. Yes, I did. I got lawn darted <laughs> right into the dirt. <laughs> My number one mistake was that I was just sitting too far up. You know, my center of gravity was forward, and when that horse came out and dropped, you know, it just threw me forward, and I couldn't get back again, so. 
Gotta always make sure that I'm sitting back, got my weight shifted back. Try again next time. You did it gracefully. Thank you. Mouthful of dirt. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like ran my, t my tongue around my teeth and like spit out this wad of dirt and all the guys were just like, oh, yeah. what? How do you like me now? <laughs> yeah, they were all like, are you okay? And I'm like, am I not supposed to be? They're like, yeah, you fell on your head. And I was just like, oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, I wouldn't have known that. I don't remember it. I don't remember. So, Brady, you walked away with the cash this weekend. Yeah. A lot of cash. You actually moved up on the leaderboard, so you're sitting number one now. Yeah. Ooh, you're on the sheet. I told myself when you put that sheet up, I was like, I'm getting my name on there. <laughs> that, was, that just fueled the fire. Like, keep, keep going with that. How do you think your ride went? Uh, sloppy. Like, really sloppy. Popped my chin a lot, like, kept looking at the sky. But other than that, it, it felt good to not give up anymore. Jane. Daryl. You're on her money list. <laughs> You're on our money list. He split, I know. split second and third this week. I know. It was pretty cool. Like Brittany said, it was pretty nice to get the name on the paper. Uh, Name's on the paper. That's all that matters. You, <laughs> you guys have solidified your spot for finals. So you're there. You're going to the big yeah. show. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Awesome. How'd your ride go today? I don't even know how to explain it. Like I was telling other people, like I had so much fun. It was so much adrenaline and just like, oh my gosh, that actually happened. And I just sat back and held on and kept swearing at the end and I couldn't hear the buzzer so I kept going until I saw the pickup guys. <laughs> she high fives me in the face. She's like, ah! <laughs> and I'm like, okay, sure, get going. Hey team. Sorry. I was so excited that you got up on the picker guy. I was like, oh my yeah. gosh, she did exactly what I told her. She, just, she grabbed me around the waist and she just floated right off. Yeah, I looked up and I saw nice. the pickup guy and I was like, Brittany would want me to go now, right? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't see your ride. I saw the end of your ride. And I was yeah. like, oh, I think she made the buzzer. It went yeah. smooth. It was good. So Duke, how did your ride go today? Well, wear a tank top under your shirt. Uh, I guess I've been trying to ride him like a bull. I really need to learn how to get back more. Two completely different rhythms. Bulls are front end, horses are back, back end. end. And it's just something that you get at that time. But once you get in that timing, it's smooth as butter. It's like I'm sitting in a rocking chair just about. Yeah, I felt like I was sitting in a... Your chair was broken. <laughs> down a flight of stairs at the same time. I feel like I got kicked down like a really tall stairwell. The ride looked better on tape than what it felt, I promise. But I, I, things happen in slow motion, and there were several things like, man, I'm out of position. The rain don't feel right. I kept getting slack in my rain, and I just, I got to work on some stuff. But uh, I am going to start wearing a tank top under my shirts now. Tori Clay. Tori, Tori, Tori. Well, I fell off the right side, not the left side, so that was a new experience. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> besides that, I, I started out strong. I kind of got to my right and just couldn't get myself back up. So I mean, I held on to the side, you know, like I was like an idiot. But no, I could have done better if I would have stayed straight. And I looked at the ground because I have a trouble if I look over that right shoulder and you look at the ground. That's where you're gonna go. And that's exactly what I did about two hops in. I was like, oh, well, that's where I'm gonna go, and that's where I went. So. What was happening that you think was putting you in that position? I think when I left the shoot, I kind of got impatient and couldn't get my foot set just right, but it kind of, it makes me nervous sitting in the shoot for too long because you see guys get flipped over on, right. so I like to right. get in and get out, and I probably didn't get set as nice as I needed to. Remember, when you crawl down that chute, it's your time. You just tune everybody out. Don't listen to people saying, come on, go, 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 go. You know what? It's money on the line. It's not their money, it's your money. Mm -hmm. And if you don't feel comfortable with something, you know what, just reset. Say, all right, hold on. Mm -hmm. And then you go with it, and then just keep that rhythm going. Great job, really great job. Thank you. Yeah. What's up? <laughs> What's up, Chotty? So you're on the money list too now. Yes. How'd you split second and third today? Mm -hmm. What do you think? It was very exciting. I was really happy to just cover. <laughs> so did you feel did you feel comfortable? Or do you think it was a rough ride? What do you think? Uh, about the, I started off really well, I feel like, and then about the second jump, I kind of got shifted over, and I, my whole mental game was just kind of zoned in. I said, no, get in and get back, and it felt comfortable. I, after I, after I got about to the fence, I just felt in rhythm and comfortable. It was really exciting to cover. Um, it's always good getting off on the pickup man, for sure. Uh, I love when I get off and the crowd is excited on how I did. Congratulations, you're on the money list. We're going to be seeing you at finals, definitely. Uh, so, Wichita Falls is up. Who's game for Wichita Falls? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Everybody's there. Sorry, there. All right, we rode four for seven. We going to go seven for seven? Yeah, we need that pink mohawk. Mm -hmm. Y'all yeah. need the pink mohawk. Bet's still on the table. 
All right, girl, let's get out of here to the hotel. <laughs> For these cowgirls, skill, grit, and courage combine to prove that they have the sticking power to succeed in one of the most dangerous rodeo sports out there. Now it's time to dust off and rest up for their next rodeo adventure. Next time on Cowgirls. Every ride counts now. It's very muddy rodeo. <laughs> so I, I was actually pretty excited about getting muddy and getting a little wild out there. She's giving excited. Me, it's giving me goosebumps just talking about it. Oh! Spurs <laughs> out! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to break it. Shake it, shake it. <laughs> 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 he said, I'd ride anything, that good for the camera. <laughs> Pink Mohawk, Wichita Falls, right? One night. Oh, we're not doing that damn dance. <laughs>